This is footage of a 2019 arrest for failure to produce ID to a police officer. A car broke down, a mechanic was called and showed up, some idiot thought it looked suspicious and called the cops. Then the cops showed up and demanded ID. But the guy was busy and obviously annoyed that the cops are harassing him while he's trying to help somebody. What are y'all doing? I'm going to description. Huh? What are y'all doing? Get in the car. Is this your car? Y'all have driver's license or IDs on you? I ain't going to submit to no ID. Listen, you call this lady right now. Listen, I ain't got time for this. I don't worry. I don't mean to be meat rude or nothing. Okay, no. You, I don't mean you to do need to give me your ID no, or driver's license. Listen, I don't want you to run run me in and it, uh, for, for nothing. Are you refusing me to give Are you refusing I'm, to give me your ID or driver's license? I'm you, you call this lady on her own, on this Step car. over that one. The police are free to ask questions, and the public is also free to ignore them. This interaction resulted in a federal civil rights lawsuit for false arrest. Originally, these police officers were granted qualified immunity, but just last week, the 11th Circuit issued an opinion in the plaintiff's appeal. Who was right? Was the mechanic illegally arrested? First, let's look at the facts. Roland Edgar is a mechanic in Huntsville, Alabama. One of his longtime clients is a guy who owns a red Toyota Camry that was primarily driven by his wife, who works as a teacher at Progressive Union Missionary Baptist Church. One or two days before this date, June 10th of 2019, uh, Mr. Gosh called Mr. Edgar and reported that the Camry had broken down while his wife was working at the church. He asked Mr. Edgar to fix the car and told him the keys would be waiting for him at the church's front office. On June 10th, around 2 p.m., Mr. Edgar went to the church to pick up the keys and to inspect the Camry. He determined that something was wrong either with the car's steering or its tires, and he concluded that he would need to come back later with tools to fix the car. That evening, he returned to the church with his stepson, Justin Newby, in tow, intending either to fix the Camry on site or to take it back to the shop for further repairs. Mr. Edgar and Mr. Newby drove a black hatchback to the church. After Mr. Edgar and his stepson entered the church's lot, the church's security guard observed them and grew concerned. From here on, the facts of the case were captured by audio and visual recording devices. At about 8.05 p.m., the security guard called 911 and told dispatch, I have two Hispanic males messing with an employee's car that was left on the lot. He also noted that he observed them remove a tire from the car. During the 911 call, the guard identified himself as a security guard for the church, gave his phone number, noted his employer, and gave a description of Mr. Edgar and Mr. Newby. About 30 minutes later, at 8.36 p.m., Officer Krista McCabe arrived at the church in her police car. How are y'all doing? How are you doing? I'm 36, I'm 4, I'm 20. Smart. How are you doing? What are y'all doing? I'm second description. Huh? What are y'all doing? Get in the car. Is this your car? Three, 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 One of your customers? One of your customers? Don't tell. Yeah. I was over here earlier. Whose car is that? That's mine. The black one? Take a break from me real fast and y'all have driver's license or IDs on you? I ain't going to submit to no ID. Listen, you call this lady okay. right now. Listen, I ain't got time for this. I'm all worried. I don't mean to be meat rude or nothing. Okay, no. You, I don't mean you to do need to give me your ID no, or driver's license. Listen, I don't want you to run run me in and it, uh, for, for nothing. Are you refusing me to give Are you refusing I'm, to give me your ID I'm or driver's license? I'm telling you, you call this lady on her own, on this Step car. over that one. In the middle of Mr. Edgar's sentence, as he was attempting to explain the situation to Officer McCabe, Officer Paralat seized Mr. Edgar from behind. He led Mr. Edgar to the side of the Camry and started handcuffing him. As Mr. Edgar protested, Officer Paralat told Mr. Edgar, we don't have time for this and you don't understand the law. During this time, the video shows that Mr. Edgar offered his driver's license at least three times before the officers could finish handcuffing him. 
Eventually, the officers managed to handcuff and search Mr. Edgar and then detain him in a squad car. Throughout this process, the officers never asked Mr. Edgar or his stepson for their names or addresses. Come on, man. See, y'all, see, here's y'all playing. You're playing right now. No, we, 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 we don't got time for this. We really don't got time for this. Man, y'all don't understand. You don't understand the law. I do. I do. I got three officers. Three officers. Three officers. Oh. Y'all know. Turn it by the way. Y'all press my right, my 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 left arm up there, man. Give it to I didn't get you off the man. I got to go. Man, twist to my left when I asked you, sir. All right, I'm on. Do your cuff. Yeah. And you on, twist yes, your wrist yes, around. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm gonna give you my ID. I have my. Phone. Hey, man. Will you go stand in front of my car for me? ID. ID. Come on, give my ID. Man. No, we'll get your ID. Keep your wrist like that. All right. All right. They're good. They're good now. Yeah. Nope. Look. They're good right now. They're not too tight. Okay. You're under arrest for what? obstruction. I didn't do nothing. All right. So if you resist any further, you will also get charged with resisting arrest. Listen, you understand? Listen, I give my ID. I'll tell you okay. what's going on. This is ridiculous. I'm trying to get a customer's car here. I'm in a rush. They, my shop's unlocked over on Governor's Drive right now. Man. Do you want my ID? Where's your ID? It's in the car, I'm sure. I thought it was in my pocket. You're all down in my pocket for no reason. I, I said my ID is either, is in my car. Go over and walk in and get my car. Okay, Where's well he's car? still going right to check there. your pocket because I don't know what's in there. All right? Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get placed in my car without knowing I'll what's in your pocket. I'll 47, You shut up. Is that how you talk to someone? Is that an officer supposed to talk to someone yeah, like this? Yeah, we're here doing a custodial I, I, search on you. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. What y'all need to do is call Mr. Bill Patel right there in this office right here and hand me the key. That's I what you already need to do. explained to you. All right. I mean, I am such a rush. How long has it been, man? I've been trying to get over and get this call all day. And then here, there, there it is. Okay. Look at it. 3821 Grange Drive. That's it. That's it right there. Is that all it's possible? She's having problems with her landlord. I got changes and stuff like that. Come to the 1020. Pick them on the other side. Come on. This ain't necessary. This ain't necessary. It is necessary. I called obstruction. I tell you, listen, I didn't do anything. I, listen, please, 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 yes, please listen, please listen. I've please. already told him that he's under arrest. This is ridiculous, man. You know what I'm saying? She, 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 hey, look, here. I didn't do a crime, but she's trying to arrest somebody for not doing a crime. She's trying to arrest me for obstruction. For what? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Huh? That's what I'm saying. Sit she's down. I, listen, Sit please, down. please listen. Sit down. Well, that's what I'm saying, man. I got my shop unlocked over there. I'm trying to confide. Man, please listen to me. Sit down. Oh, man, this is... Please listen. No, you don't want to listen to us. I'm trying to explain to you. I'm... Sir. I'm trying to explain. Hey. Okay, once again, uh, just have a seat right there for me, okay? Yeah, Do you have huh? no action? As the court noted, general federal constitutional law, the broad background rule is first that the police may ask members of the public questions and make consensual requests of them. That's Florida versus Bostic 1991. As long as the police do not convey a message that compliance is required. But the person need not answer any questions at all that are put to him. Indeed, he may decline to listen to questions and may just go on his way. Florida v. Royer, 1983. Secondly, while the Fourth Amendment permits the police to briefly detain a person to investigate criminal activity, any obligation to answer police questions arises from state, not federal, constitutional law. Mr. Edgar was charged with obstructing governmental operations in violation of Alabama Code 13A 10 to A1. The city of Huntsville then dropped all the charges related to this incident. After the charges were dismissed, Mr. Edgar filed a Section 1983 civil rights lawsuit alleging a false arrest and violation of his Fourth Amendment rights against unlawful searches and seizures. When they got to the summary judgment stage, the trial judge, the trial judge, the district court judge, found that the defendant police officers were entitled to qualified immunity. 
So Mr. Edgar was charged with this state statute obstructing governmental operations in violation of Alabama code. And a person violates that section if by means of intimidation, physical force, or interference, or by any other independently unlawful act, he obstructs a government function. So the defendant police officers, or at least their lawyers here, argued that there was this arguable, theoretical, probable cause that the state statute had been violated on two theories. First, they said that Mr. Edgar used physical force or interference to obstruct the officer's investigation. And that secondly, in the alternative, they argued that Mr. Edgar committed an independently unlawful act by refusing to identify himself as Officer McCabe ordered him to do. They cited the Alabama Stop and Identify Statute, 15530, and the Alabama Driver's License Statute, 3269, for the reason that Mr. Edgar was, was required to produce his identification. So looking at all the facts within a police officer's knowledge at the time of the incident, the 11th Circuit held that no reasonable officer could have observed Mr. Edgar, as we did in this video, and believed that he was using intimidation or physical force to intentionally obstruct Officer McCabe's investigation. Accordingly, therefore, no reasonable police officer could have believed that he had violated that law, and there would be not even arguable probable cause. So the court completely dismissed the physical claim that the officers were making. Secondly, on the argument that there was a stop, the stop and identify statute in Alabama, the court noted that the statute allows an Alabama police officer who reasonably suspects, therefore, i.e. there's reasonable suspicion already, that a crime is being or has been or is about to be committed, can stop a person in public and demand of him his name, address, and an explanation of his actions. When the officer McCabe asked, what are y'all doing? The guy responded and explained that he, we were fixing the car and that it belonged to a customer. And when he stood up to answer more of the questions, the video shows that he continued explaining who the owner of the car was, and he began explaining how they could then verify those claims. But instead, he was abruptly arrested by the second police officer. Alabama law does not permit the police to demand physical identification, and therefore the officers lacked probable cause to make the arrest at that time. The Alabama statute here is clear. It lists only three things that the police may ask about. So it's not an issue of magic words that must be uttered. There's a difference between asking for specific information, what's your name, where do you live, and demanding a physical ID or license. The information contained in the driver's license goes well beyond the information required to be revealed under the Stop and ID statute in Alabama. Therefore, the court held in summary that it's been clearly established for decades prior to Mr. Edgar being arrested that the police are free to ask questions and the public is also free to ignore them. It has been clearly established prior to Mr. Edgar's arrest that any legal obligation to speak to the police and answer the questions arises as a matter of state law. And the state statute itself in this particular case is clear and requires no additional construction. Police are empowered to demand from an individual three things, name, address, and an explanation of his actions. It was thus clearly established at the time of Mr. Edgar's arrest that she could not demand that he produce physical ID. And because Officer McCabe's demands for an ID or a driver's license, especially where he wasn't driving, went beyond what the statute in Alabama law required, she clearly violated, or she violated clearly established law. So under these facts and these precedents, no reasonable police officer could have believed that there was probable cause to arrest Mr. Edgar for obstructing governmental operations by violating Alabama Code 15530. And this theory cannot support the grant of qualified immunity to these officers. Therefore, uh, the qualified immunity that was given to the officers was then taken away, and now it'll be sent back down to the district court for trial. As always, thanks for watching. If you like going through these sorts of cases that we have both body cam and also um, trial court level opinions and also federal circuit court opinions, um, those are the best cases of all that I like to go over. If you like doing that, subscribe both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it.